Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Gender and Development Studies. In today's session, that is the first lesson, we're going to understand what is gender. We're going to appreciate social construct. Then we differentiate social construct properly to understand the theory of gender studies. Of course, we're going to highlight problems with mainstream theories. Then protect the various forms of women from the sampling, for sampling rather, for sampling purposes or investigations. Then we're going to present feminist empiricism, the radical form, and then the context of it. We're going to put up a question, which is going to be one of the early parts of it. We're going to be understanding what is women in development, then place some emphasis on framework, the framework, theoretical framework in his studies. Um, we're going to be looking at um, uh, issues of race, gender, equality, inequalities, then of course the type of theoretical framework that there is, then social feminist framework is another. We we'll end up with um, understanding the thinking and the evolution of what feminist development issues. The name is H. Kwame Afaglo. By the way, this study is for graduate work. It is for graduate work. So it's meant for people or persons who have gone above the first degree. But if you've not gone above the first degree and you want to just understand it as um, a master class, yes, we will explain it in such a way that you would appreciate it nicely as master class and you can use at your workplaces or for any other activity. Okay, so that be the case, we can then start straight away. What then is gender development? Gender refers to a certain social construct that is characterized as women and men in the norms, the rules, and the relationships. So that is what gender is. Gender is not necessarily being androcentric or estrogen centric, but it just comes in. That's the sexual hormones. It just comes in. So we need to understand these issues of gender. However, there's a new variant that has come up with uh, transgender. Men changing to women and women changing to men. So it still falls within a certain cat categorization. That's a social construct. So it's fine. So it's gender and development. And how is the inequalities going to be abridged by way of what? Affirmative action. That is what we're going to say. So whilst we pause in a bit for an advert, Yeah, welcome back. Um, today's discussion is a lesson one on the theories, the theoretical framework of and the agenda and development studies. All right, we've explained what gender is. So then that's done. We can appreciate, we have to appreciate what social construct is. When we were trying to explain what gender is, we said it's got to do with a social construct. So it means society has defined some rules, characteristics as women and men. If that be the case, a society that has defined them, has given them rules and norms, and that rules and norms is what we want to vie into the men and the women, or women and men. What are the rules? One, you see, um, men are mostly, for a while now, historically, men are mostly into what? Formal job. And women are into domestic unpaid jobs. Take note, men are into formal jobs that they are paid. And women are into what? Domestic unpaid jobs. And that is one that has transcended since the Abrahamic era or since the biblical era. That women are supposed to be in the house and preparing food. Islam has got the same thing. Take care of the children. And men have to go out and work. And that is a social construct that has been made. Can we look at that social construct carefully? So traditionally, men are supposed to go out to work and bring the money home and women are supposed to take care of the home and their children and they don't get paid are there any research to confirm these social constructs and how does it affect society and then development will change issues so that the higher populated gender gets involved into the mainstream the mainstream is male mainstream what sometimes other writers call androcentric or male centric when you integrate women into the mainstream, then the mainstream gets balanced through affirmative action. All right. So in this theoretical framework, we're going to be looking at what theory is. And a theory is a testable statement. 
it has to follow some logic based on an assumption. The assumption is that women are less populated than men or women are more populated than men. Then we test it. How do we test it? Over the years, we have observed that in academia, most studies are biased. They are, they are male university students biased. They use them. They are used as participants for research. Not much is taken from the women. The other bit of such knowledge gathering and testing ends up without having results that is what male centric because we don't have female in the research or it is not tailored towards the female. But we have various categorization of female. We have women who are working in the homes and unpaid jobs. We have women who are working and they have hired other women to work in their homes for them, domestic. We have women who are working on paid jobs in the home and do unpaid jobs in the community. Then we have women who are fully working and are competitive. And those four categorizations, when you want to sample for such studies, you have to integrate them. Either than that, your results will be hot, tailored towards the male. And it's not fair for a society to be looking at things just in a male view. It has to encompass male and female. Some other researchers think that we have women in it, and it is not clear. The representation must be quite clear. It must show the population must be represented, the gender population must be represented in our researches, and that would come up with a better result. Most of the other bit is that most of the research that has been done or a good number of the research that has been done is more quantitative, counting, 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 counting. When you keep counting, you ignore the qualitative bit of it. See? Once you ignore the qualitative bit, it becomes problematic. In the sense that, based on that, women are always categorized as sort of domestic workers unpaid, and that is not fair. There's no equality in things like that. So then you have problems with um, our researches. One of the problems we have with research is what is too empirical. It doesn't account for qualitative um, views. Then the third one is what? There's the researchers bias. And the researchers mostly are men. So their views, bias, their participation plays a role. Either they are, they are non-participant observers, and that affects the research, or they are participant, obs they are participant observers, which only few cases happens. So these are all some of the researchers bias and because they are male centric, it's not worth it. Let's take a commercial break and back. All right. Yeah, welcome back. Today's discussion is on gender and development. The title is a lesson one and it's on theory, theoretical framework. So we left off at the problems with um, research, which we said was male centric or androcentric. And we want to make it a lot more fairer where there's equity. So we have suggested four categories of women to be considered when we're doing research to bring about some balance. Besides, if you have a true representation of the population, the women and the men, where the women are more than the men, it gives us a fairer idea in our research. So gender and development is worth it. It's worth exploring. Okay. Based on that, ideally, according to Harden, who is Harden, who is well-known in research areas. In 1987, that's when he wrote this. He said, look, research must be what? Objective. The objectivity is looking at it must be dispassionate. It must be non-political. It must have, it must be value neutral. When we do that, we are then heading towards something better in our results, where the result itself, if it's validated, it's testing what it intends to test, that is validation, then we are better off. Okay, then the research participants, that's what, what we've looked at, the four categorization of women who are supposed to be included in the research. That is important because it comes with a certain feminist view. Because all these four categories are not included and we have only male, male university students research done, then it means that the categorization is problematic. So then it would naturally, to bring a balance, there will be some radical change. There will be a radical change from the feminist side, the women's side. So some other women have taken this case up, and that's how what we call feminist empiricism. The women want 
also want research to be done. They want to be counted in whatever that they do. It's not just the research bit of it, but in society. Because we earlier on defined gender as a social construct. So then we have to have the women in it. Okay, so if that be the case, we look at empiricism. There are two lines of feminist empiricism. We're going to delve into feminist empiricism a bit later. One is what? The radical. They became so radical and it started from the liberal side, the liberal feminist movements. And they want to be represented in everything, women in development. It started all the way back from the 1930s where the world was looking at modernization and modernization was looked into from the Western perspective, Western technological view and Western values. Into the 50s and the 60s and the 70s, it was all Western technology and the Western values. But these liberal women, women who are from liberalism or liberal, liberalist, feminist, uh, feminist liberals are saying that, look, women must be represented in every place. So the non-governmental organization, especially foreign bodies like Dutch aid organization, the US aid, and then the Nordic aid, aid organizations did push that when they are sending employees out, they must ensure that they have women as part. And those women, they call women, they group themselves into women in development, where they came up with policies where they address women issues. And it has evolved since the 1930s up until now. Okay, we'll look at the evolution as we go along the line. Okay, so they are also looking at, what is it? Um, feminist empiricism. Okay, so the radical, they came in hard because they were, were being uh, marginalized. Women were marginalized in the 30s and the 40s. Even in the US, they were not allowed to vote because they didn't have tax paying roles. So they were marginalized. So women were marginalized. So if they have to come into the mainframe, which is male centered, they have to come in radical. And they did come in real radical. And it was understandable. It has to be understood. That they had to come in radical then to them whatever it is that you want to discover the context of discovery must equate to the contents of justification so whatever you want to do with gender you have to be sure that the content the content of your discovery must equate to the content of your justification once there are more women than men you cannot go and center on men and use the results to generalize for both don't work and that's what they are saying and that makes a lot of reasoning okay so women in development that's how they also moved into the main framework of working from the uh, foreign aid donor agencies danida and co that's how they got it done before even the us aid also joined all right so they formed dexes like i said and they propagated policies and made sure that women countries that they visit they made sure women was were brought into the main frame, the main frame of working. Right. But we know the Arabs have that problem because of their religious uh, beliefs. Even that, Saudi Arabia has made some changes that some ladies can drive buses now. In some countries, ladies don't work at all, and that is why we have gender and development. We have to bring the higher population into the main frame so that development can occur. And there is this saying that um, women are their own enemies. How do you do a research like that? It's just a saying that women are their own enemies. Look at it. If you do research, you find that that saying is falsy, falsy. According to a UN research, um, said each woman, uh, each woman entrepreneur employs two up to five women. Each woman entrepreneur employs no less than two and maybe five or up to five women and gives them employment. So women, are, they should be seen as equal partners in development. That's why we have gender and development studies. So it's going to go that far. All right. We're looking at the feminist empiricism. Oh, yeah, feminist empiricism. And I tried to explain that the radical, why they became radical and why they think that the context of discovery should be equal to the context of justification. I said it makes all the reasoning fine reasoning and we have to begin to appreciate that especially we the men must begin to appreciate that the more all right when you look at this you look at it in terms of the norms what norms and values do we have in our communities that is favoring men 
and bringing women into a certain second i don't want to say second class but downplaying them or are they complementary okay let's look at how societies how our communities rather because there are various communities and various norms how does our community look at parenting i.e how do we look at abortion do women have the right to their body when it comes to abortion do they have to consult men when it comes to parenting is it only women who are supposed to parent their children or parent, uh, fathers can also do that the nordic countries some of the nordic countries the men do a lot of parenting whilst in some of the southern countries the women do the parenting so they are changing rules what about violence against women interestingly in ghana uh, sometime in 2012 thereabout violence against domestic violence reported a lot more of women beating their husbands <laughs> which is strange but then that that happens but it's not all the years i mean just one of so just laugh it off then what about marriage who dictates the pace of marriage those are issues that comes up these are questions that you ask what are the norms in marriage hmm? what roles do our value systems play? what role that court that's culture play that is there a cultural bias against women or cultural bias against men if there's obviously and obviously not just if there is obviously there's cultural bias against women cultural bias against women making them subservient and that subservient nature is what is pulling out the radical aspect of feminist movement and we have to begin to appreciate that aspect of it we can't take that out we just can't take that out we get into the last bit of our discussion in this sense we have to deconstruct you see if we are saying that culture plays cultural bias plays a role then we have to deconstruct it's a social construct so we have to deconstruct that social construct effect the change observe what it is and then reconstruct it or you deconstruct the social making the social order then you reconstruct it in that the emphasis was on men so now we have to deconstruct the social emphasis on men and place the emphasis on women and then bring them up through affirmative action to bring some balance and it is that balance that will lead to this development. That's why they call it gender and development, not feminist and development, but gender and development. Women in development. So we look at that. If we're going to deconstruct, then women must participate in development. So what's the framework? When you want to study this, you want to understand what's the framework. How does it happen to get women in development? Women in development must follow within a certain framework. And that framework, theory, let's understand the meaning of framework. It's just a conceptual structure that helps us understand the social world and then we can interact with it and make the needed change framework means a conceptual structure that helps us understand the social world we interact with and then we make the needed change if that understanding is clear then it means that the ordering in society is either for chaos or is for harmony but at the end of the day the change must be positive so it must be for harmony so affirmative action is supposed to be for harmony and not for conflict where there's likely to be conflict you must find a way of resolving that conflict to attain harmony and that is the focus let's take a commercial break and then we are back okay then welcome back we just explained what framework is and we said framework is the conceptual structure that helps us understand the social world that we interact with for change and we said change was for better and in that process we have conflict or harmony and i did indicate that we should go for harmony so women in development is for harmony it's not for conflict but it's for harmony so if you're in the home and there's cultural bias whatever you do should be for harmony to reverse or to change the order should be for harmony but not for conflict all right but there is likely to be various types of um frame theoretical frameworks when it comes to gender and development we'll go through them historically but not for today today we're going to look at is it race is it gender is it abilities what are the variances like i gave you the example marriage 
Who dictates the pace of marriage in your culture? It's a question. Who dictates the level of violence in your culture? Who leads in that level of violence? You see, the men against their wives, the women. They think through carefully. So is the harmony achieved? No. So um, based on that, we have one other framework which you call socialist feminist framework. I'm not going to go into those details because there's the historical aspect that we'll look at carefully. But when it comes to socialist feminist um, framework, it means where Marxism meets what radical feminist, where Marxism meets radical feminism, and theoretically where Friedrich Engels' ideas plays a leading role. He says that look, women in some societies don't are not supposed to have properties. It's the men who make property. If that be the case, the angle is right that, look, we have to reverse the order. We have to change the order. We have to deconstruct and reconstruct that anybody, any gender should have a right because we are all humans and have a right to what? Property and wealth. And that's Frederick Engel in his sort. Frederick Engel in, in his Communist Manifesto. So those are issues that we're going to be looking at. So the, 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 the construct you can look at, is it urban? Is it rural? Is it local? Is it countrywide? Is it nation? Is it international? Is it the north? Is it the south? Is it developed? Is it developing? Those are issues. I only use third world in these uh, discussions, right? So the thinking, which is the last bit that we have to discuss, the thinking is understanding women in this construct. That, please take note that they have, their issues are broken into two in the evolution one is what practical gender needs you know if you want to go radical or you want to go evolutionary to redress the construct to deconstruct if you want to deconstruct we have seen that per the examples of marriage um violence against women and um social rules we have to deconstruct in deconstructing we want to understand what are the roles of women is it practical gender needs or it is strategic gender needs what do i mean by practical gender needs that means women want to satisfy the needs of themselves and their children that's the practical uh, gender needs on daily basis practical gender needs it's on daily basis for them to satisfy themselves the needs of themselves and their children then when it comes to strategic gender needs that is what long-term needs that goes to what establish the question of their subordination and re-establish their equality. There's inequality between gender, between men and women, and that inequality has to be addressed by most societies. The name for this discussion is H. Kwame Afago. You can reach me on the email you see or the telephone number you see above on the screen, and we'll have more questions. Next week, we'll discuss another bit of it. So this is lesson one. Just let me, a quick recap. Gender is a social construct with characteristics that's the norms and the values and the rules in men and women. So then we touch on a construct. Because a social construct, then it's a men and women. And we said men were into formal jobs, paid jobs, and then women were into domestic unpaid jobs and stuff like that. Okay, then you go to highlight the problems of mainstream theory. Mainstream theory is that because it's a construct, there have been so much research that's mainstream, that's what college male college students or male university students in the u.s did they take care of race no so you take note of some of this things. we are feminist empiricism they are radical and they want everything redressed they want the deconstruction of the social social construct then reconstructing it to give them the opportunity to work as partners in development and there we will crystallize it as sort harmony harmonious it's crystallized into something development that is harmonious all right so and we talked about women in development and how they work in various uh, international aid agencies and how they've done research and written policies and all that stuff we talk about socialist feminists where socialism or marxism meets rad uh, radical feminism and the outcome in terms of property owning and farming and co in most african countries women don't own land in ghana women don't own a lot of lands men own almost all the lands culturally women are not made chiefs only men are made chiefs and 
such constructs must be deconstructed. Such social or cultural biases must be broken down to allow women to also become her chiefs. And not only men, patriarchal. All right. So those are some of the issues. Thank you.